Hi guys, let me take a few minutes and remind you how to make a stem and leaf plot. Let's use this data set where we have the ages of the presidents of the United States when they were inaugurated. So I'd like to get an idea of what this data set looks like in terms of where its center is, how spread out these data are, and something called the shape of this set of data. So George Washington was inaugurated when he was age 57. So what we're going to do is take all of these ages and split them into two parts. We're going to call the tens place the stem. We're going to call the ones place the leaf. So we're going to convert George Washington's age into the following. We're going to think of the five separately from the seven. We're going to separate them with a bar. So this five here is called the stem. Here, this seven is called the leaf. And what we're going to do is represent all of the observations in the data set by using the appropriate stem and the appropriate leaf. The first thing we should do, though, is make a key. So if you have a 5 for a stem and a 7 for a leaf, what that represents is 57 years of age. So this is called a key. When you make a stem and a leaf plot, you should include a key. So if I look at the ages of inauguration, the youngest age at inauguration, I believe, was Teddy Roosevelt. He was 42. The oldest age at inauguration was Reagan. He was 69 years of age. So our graph needs to accommodate stems of 4, 5, and 6. So I'll start doing that over here. I need stems of 4 for the presidents inaugurated in their 40s five for the 50s and six for the 60s. So literally all I'm going to do is go president by president and list the ones place for their age. So George Washington was 57. So I'm going to put a leaf of seven here. There's the 57 for Washington. John Adams was 61. So I'll put a leaf of one here in the 60s, 61. Jefferson, 57. So I'll put another leaf of seven there in the 50s. Madison was also 57. Monroe was 58, John Quincy Adams, 57, 61 for Jackson, Van Buren was 54, and so forth. So literally what we can do is do this for all of the presidents, and that's what I've done down here without actually taking the time to go through all of those. Here is my graph. So notice we have a key. It's important to include a key. We should also include a title. So these are the ages of the presidents at inauguration. The ages of US presidents. The ages of US presidents at inauguration. So having a key is important. You should always title your graph. So then I can look at the graph and I can actually see the observations. 49, someone was age 48, age 46, age 58, age 54. I can use the stem and the leaf to literally reconstruct the data set. Now notice the stems should be in order, that's important. It's not as important that the leaves are in order. So notice, there aren't that many fours and sixes, but there are a whole lot of presidents that were in their 50s when they were inaugurated. So it might be helpful to get a better idea of the shape of this graph to do what's called splitting the stems. So literally, instead of one group of 40s and 50s and 60s, we're going to split the 40s into the lower and upper 40s. Same thing for the 50s and same thing for the 60s. So take a look at what that's going to look like. So now, instead of one stem for each age, we're going to have two. Lower 40s, upper 40s. Lower 50s, upper 50s, lower 60s, and upper 60s. So literally, this first stem of four, that's for the lower 40s. 
So I should explain what that means. The lower 40s, that will include ages 40, 41, 42, 43, and 44. That's five different ages. 40 to 44 will be included there. In the upper 40s then, So in the upper 40s, we also have five ages, 45, 46, 47, 48, and 49. So we're going to have 45 to 49. It's important when you split the stems, that's what this is called, splitting stems, that each stem has the same number of possible leaves. So here the leaves will be 0 through 4. There are five possibilities. Here the leaves will be 5 through 9. Again, there are five possibilities. Since we're going to take our original stem and leaf plot and we're going to rewrite it, at this point it's probably worth taking the time to put the stems and, well the stems are already in order, but to put the leaves in order, there will come a time where it will be helpful to have them in order. It's not a requirement of this type of a graph to have them in order, but it can be helpful. So I'm going to go up here to my original graph. My smallest leaf is a 2 and next is a 3. Those are the only leaves that are from 0 to 4. So in this first group from 40 to 44, I'm going to put just a leaf of 2 and a leaf of 3. So I've taken care of the 2 and the 3. The remaining leaves, it looks like in order, there are two 6s, there are two 7s, there is an 8, and two 9s. So again, I'll put them in order with the two 6s, the two 7s, the eight and the two nines. So this process is called splitting stems. Splitting stems. So what it does, it lets you get a better idea of if you will, how these data are spread out, what the variability looks like. It basically gives you more classes, if you will. You have a, instead of a graph where we only had three classes, 40s, 50s, and 60s, now we've doubled that to have six. I've gone ahead and completed this graph already. It would not be very hard to go through all of the leaves for five and all of the leaves for the 60s and put them in order. I've done that already. So, here is what the plot looks like. I can basically fit the entire plot on the screen now. So again, lower 40s, upper 40s, lower 50s, upper 50s, lower 60s, and the upper 60s. This is called a stem and leaf plot. Again, it should have a key, so forgive me, that's important enough that I'm going to include it. A 4 with a bar and a 2 means 42 years of age. So in addition to that, what these represent, these are the ages of the presidents at inauguration. So the phrase goes, a picture is as good as a thousand words. So when you're looking at your data set, I suppose starting with a picture of that data set is worth many words because it gives you a lot of information about what's going on. So this gives me an idea without actually calculating a mean or a median, it gives me an idea of the center, if you will, or the middle age at which presidents have tended to be inaugurated. So I would offer that that age is somewhere in the 50s, I would say somewhere probably in the mid 50s. So that's a notion of center. Of course, we could use this graph to find the median relatively easily. We could enter all of the numbers into a calculator and divide by the number of presidents there have been. And we could find the actual average, but just looking at this graph, I can get a rough idea of where the center is. Looks like the center is in the mid 50s, and that's good enough at this point. So we'll call the center about the mid-50s. So I can get an idea of the spread, a pretty specific idea. The lowest age at inauguration was 42. The highest age was 69. So in terms of the spread, you could just subtract those. So if you take the highest age, which is 69, 
or I suppose we could call that the max. We can subtract the 42, that would be the low, or we can call that the minimum. So if we take that difference, 69 minus 42, that gives us, what would that be, 27. So that value of 27 is known as the range. This is the range of the data. It gives us an idea of how spread out the data are. So I've got a center in the mid-50s. I have a spread of about 27. The other characteristic of the data that we can get an idea of is what's known as the shape. So we're going to spend a few days talking about what we mean by shape, although one of the things that I like to do when I've got a stem plot like this, I like to, here let me change my zoom, here we go. When I have a stem plot like this, one of the things that I like to do is turn the graph on its side so I have the lower stems, the low 40s here on the left, and the higher stems, the 60s, here's the high 60s on the right. So my stems are in order. This gives me an idea of shape. So in the middle is where most of my data happen to be in the 50s. Then the graph trails off, if you will, to the smaller ages. It trails off through the higher 40s and lower 40s. It also trails up as the ages rise. So it trails off into the lower 60s and then into the higher 60s. This is a classic example of what's called a symmetric graph. So in this sense, in the middle is where most of my data happened to be, and then the data trail off to the left and to the right. So there are different types of shapes for graphs. This is a relatively classic shape. I would call it a symmetric shape. There are other types of symmetric shapes. You can also have data that trail off in a greater amount to one direction or the other direction. They can trail off to the right or they can trail off to the left. Those graphs are called skewed, either skewed to the right or skewed to the left, and we'll study some of those shapes over the next couple of days. So when you are looking at a graph, it's important to give the center, you can approximate it, give the spread. Again, that's something that's a little bit easier to calculate directly. And in this case, it's good to talk about the shape. So I would offer, at least for this shape, this is a relatively symmetric shape. This is relatively symmetric. Hope this has been helpful.